Check this out. We have a simple web application which just handles our password reset request. Like this. You basically enter your email, you click on send, and eventually it will handle the request and tell you, hey, the password reset has been sent to your email. If you take a look at the email, you can see that we have just received a password reset request, and basically here's our email, and here is our token for the request. The back end of this web application looks very simple. We essentially accept the email from the body. We basically do a JSON stringify to save it into the payload and prepare it for Python to handle the email sending. And then we basically get Python send.py file and we basically pipe in the payload into this file. But did you know that this is actually flawed and there is a big vulnerability within this code that can allow attackers to overtake anyone's account with a simple request? Well, I guess you have to find out. And maybe if you want to learn hacking and become good at this, then check out the course which is down in the description box below. All right, so I'm, I'm not going to actually make this video too long. I'm just going to do the necessary parts because you guys seem to be complaining about videos that are too long. So I don't know. I'm just going to keep them short. So why is this a vulnerability? What's going on here? Well, first things first, you have an email. Basically, you enter the email. It's JSON. Some of you might already suspect that there's type confusion, but let me spoil the story a little bit. There is something else, in, but it's similar. Don't worry. If you said parameter pollution, then you probably are right. If you take a look at the hackstricks.wiki website, we can see some things are interesting here. First things first, there is a nice little hackstrick which tells you to try and provide two emails, like an array of emails, within the password request. But why would you even do that? Why the hell would that even work if it works? Let's test that out. Here we can ex essentially encapsulate this as an array and basically put in, again, our email, which is that overflow. And now if we click send, we essentially fade a little bit, a little bit, and eventually, it, yeah, as you can see, it absolutely did work. We can verify if it worked by going out of this and refreshing. And as you can see, we just currently received this zero minutes ago, which essentially contains our email here. But as you can see, it does look like an array. So what is going on here? Why did we still receive an email for our account when essentially it was submitted as an array? Honestly, I have to do a little bit of explanation here. First things first, I use SMTP library to send emails, even for my own personal websites. Whenever I'm building a project, I'll probably use this to basically handle the password reset or something else. It's very easy and very easy to use too. And the SMTP library, this too, essentially is controlling where this email will land. And believe it or not, this actually can accept arrays. Believe it or not, this can accept lists, arrays, whatever you call them. And each email within the array will be a recipient. If that confuses you, don't worry. If it doesn't, then congratulations, you basically found out why this is an issue. And, and to be completely transparent with you, this is not like magic stuff and only happens if people mess up. No, actually, I think I'll put a link in the description for the report of an actual vulnerability which was found and reported to the program. I don't remember which one. I think it was GitLab actually that was hacked just like this. They accepted two emails within the array to be sent and boom, you got account takeover vulnerability. Well, let me show you what can I do now. So I can basically provide another email on top of this one, which will be my other email, of course, which is which is this. This is my other email. So if I click send and wait a moment, just wait a little bit, and eventually, boom, there you go. Password reset email was sent to both of these emails. As you can see, they included. Don't worry about this token thing. It's just there for debugging. I had to mess things around when I was building this code, but don't worry about it. And if you take a look at it, would you look at that? We just received this, as you can see, but the recipient is me and this other email now. So how is this actually exploitable? Well, the first things first, this is our victim right here. And I can even actually tell you. So this is a victim and right here is the attacker. So the attacker puts the victim right here, which will be the account whose token will be leaked. And this is the attacker who will just receive that link and token and email completely and just reset the password of the victim. And that's why this actually right here is very dangerous and you probably shouldn't do it. But how do you prevent this? Well, it's very honestly easy. This should fail when you're checking which user you should send this re password request to. Because when you receive a list, you really need to check first things first, whether the email exists, not just blindly sending it like I'm doing it. But this is just for an example. You can find the actual report, which was an issue in the description down below if you want to check it out. But when you receive this, you essentially should first things first check if you receive an array. 
And secondly, just basically verify whether the email is even within the platform. And even if you want to accept this, then send each email individually and basically strip them apart. But that's highly risky and I don't recommend doing that. But just remember that message two right here actually accepts a list. And if somehow user input gets here without you pre-sanitizing everything, then you have a problem. So hopefully you learned something today. And I try to keep this short actually for you. And hopefully that works too. I'm hopefully now I'm hopeful that people now have nothing to complain about. So I'm not just going to stop yapping now. I'm, I'm going to do an outro. But yeah, hopefully you learned something today. And if you want to check it out, check out my course and check out that report, which I've talked about. I, I am 99% sure that the report was on GitLab. <laughs> you actually thought that I'm going to end the video. No, I'm not in the video. Here is the actual report. And this was reported back in 2023. So this was actually very recent. And as you can see, this was rewarded with $35,000. But this is how it goes. Essentially, you supply an email field, and the email field contains two emails. So this is an actual issue that big company GitLab actually messed up with. And he was rewarded with $35,000 because of it. So if you don't want to have people exploit your website, then obviously take my advices and maybe advices from the people within the comments, I will pin some of the good advices, of course. Of course, I'm not that competent to give you an actual good advice, but probably people are all in the comments. So I'll just pin the best comment. And secondly, if you're a hacker, try this out. When you're doing security research, just go ahead and try it out. Okay, now for real, I'm going to do an outro. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay responsible. Make sure your code is secure and peace.